Good morning. My name is Laura and I'm a healthcare coordinator at the Enclave in Las Vegas. And this morning, um, I'm going to discuss with you breast cancer awareness and the importance of getting screenings. Um, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, which is an annual campaign to increase awareness of the disease. Breast cancer awareness is really important and so is breast health awareness. Just learning about the common breast problems that you might not be aware of. The goal of breast cancer awareness is to make sure every woman has access to education, screening, treatment, support, and hope, regardless of her circumstances. Um, the pink ribbon has become synonymous with breast cancer awareness. We see it everywhere in October, right down to the laces on football cleats. Um, and so my kids have asked at home, um, when did this begin and why? Why do we use the, the pink ribbon for breast cancer awareness? And um, so I have done a little research on that one. In, in 1991, the pink ribbons were distributed to all the breast cancer survivors and participants of the Komen New York City Race for the Cure. And it was a signifying the promise that Komen founder Nancy G. Brinker had made to her dying sister, Susan. Susan G. Komen. And some of you might be familiar with the Susan G. Komen foundations and um, different charity activities um, surrounding that name. Um, her, her sister Susan um, uh, was promised by Nancy that she would do anything she could to end breast cancer. Um, the loss of her sister was a, a huge impact and just sparked that passion to make sure it didn't happen to other women and other families. Um, in that same year, Charlotte Haley, a grassroots activist um, and breast cancer survivor, was trying to raise awareness for the lack of funding for cancer prevention and sent out thousands of cards with the ribbons attached and it struck a chord and now that pink ribbon is the international symbol of breast cancer awareness. Um, so what kinds of things can we do for prevention? Um, how do you reduce your risk, especially for a cancer, breast cancer? Um, there's some risk factors like uh, family history that just can't be changed. Um, but there are some lifestyle changes you can make that will lower your risk. So number one on that list would be to limit alcohol to less than a drink a day. Um, also, if you're a smoker, stop. Um, don't smoke. There's a link there, especially in premenopausal women. The next thing on that prevention list would be to control your weight. Um, this is especially true if obesity is occurring later in life, um, after menopause. It's really important to then be physically active. Um, that's a great way to control your weight and just improve your health. Um, healthy adults should aim for 150 minutes per week of moderate aerobic activity or um, more intense, vigorous um, aerobic activity around 75 minutes, so half that time. Um, if your intensity level is um, more vigorous. And then in addition to the aerobic activity every week, 
we should be doing some strength training twice a week, two times every week. And um, that can just be with light weights and just that resistance, it's very important. Um, another way to prevent and reduce your risk of breast cancer would be breastfeeding. The longer you breastfeed, the greater the protective effects will be. Um, also on that list would be to limit the doses and the duration of hormone therapy. Combination hormone therapy um, that's lasting more than three to five years is going to increase the risk of breast cancer. So um, if you're taking hormone therapy for menopausal symptoms, discuss the other alternatives and options with your doctor. Um, and if the benefits of that hormone uh, replacement therapy or hormone, hormone therapy is uh, those benefits, if they outweigh the risks for you, um, then just proceed with that treatment using the lowest dose um, that works for you, that your doctor recommends, um, and just continue to be closely monitored. I, following a hysterectomy, have had to um, have this discussion with my doctor and have chosen to use the hormone replacement therapy and just be monitored closely on a regular basis and have my screenings done and just have an awareness of breast health to make sure that any any abnormalities or risks can be caught early on and then avoid exposure to radiation and environmental pollutions um, so just reducing your exposure to radiation by only having medical imaging tests done when absolutely necessary. You want to just limit your exposure. Um, having a healthy diet is an important way, again, to manage your weight and to just stay healthy. Part of being active would be that healthy diet piece. Um, that's really important. And there's been a lot of research about this. Um, and some reports say that a Mediterranean diet is ideal to lower risk for breast cancer. Um, it's got the extra virgin olive oils mixed with nuts. Um, and focuses on plant-based foods, your fruits and vegetables, whole grains, healthy fats, um, so fish over red meats, and just trying um, with our diet to, to reduce our risk for disease, including breast cancer. And screening, is um, really important. We just need to be vigilant about breast cancer detection. And if you notice any changes at all in your breast, um, such as a new lump or skin changes, to consult with your doctor. Um, so the screening test that we use for breast cancer detection is a mammogram. And women that are 50 to 74 years old are at average risk for breast cancer and um, mammograms should be done at least every two years. Um, women 40 to 49 with average risk, you can discuss with your doctor when to start and how often um, to get mammograms. It may be annually in your circumstances. Um, or again typically minimally every two years and the goal for screening is to catch any kind of cancer early catch it early on um, 
because early stage cancer, it's going to be easier to treat than later stage cancer. And the chance of survival is increased and much higher the earlier we catch it and detect it. Um, and a mammogram can detect breast cancer up to two years before the tumor can be felt by you or your doctor. And that's pretty significant. Um, and what signs should you be looking for um, when you're doing some self checks? Um, what, what are the signs of breast cancer that should be concerning to you? So there's various um, signs that are concerning. I'm going to focus on seven of those. So number one, swollen lymph nodes um, under the arm or around the collarbone. These are concerning. Um, also, a swelling of all or part of your breast. If there's skin irritation or dimpling, like uh, you've got rash or um, that dimpling of the skin, like an orange peel. Um, also, if there's breast pain, a pain in a specific area, or nipple pain, um, nipple retraction, where it's inverted in, it's retracting in, um, any redness, scale, kind of like a scaliness um, or thickening of that uh, breast skin or nipple, and if there's discharge from the nipple, these are. Um, Signs that you should bring up with your doctor. Um, make sure that that they're checked out by your medical professional, and um, and if they think it's necessary or connected, they'll likely do some screening um, for breast cancer just to make sure. That, um, that that's not what it's a sign of. <laughs> because if it is, it's, it's good to, it's, it's important that you've gone in and, and addressed that concern so that treatment can begin as early as possible. Um, many of us have loved ones that have been impacted by breast cancer. It, it affects um, so many households so many families. Um, it's uh, become really personal to me lately um, with my grandmother's diagnosis um, and also a very close friend, uh, her diagnosis. Um, and she has really advocated for a 3D mammogram to all of her friends and loved ones. Um, that was uh, an important tool in detecting her breast cancer and so when I get my annual mammograms I make sure that they're three-dimensional um, I've had to advocate for that um, it's, it's not always what's offered and um, yeah it's just so important to know your family history and um, do everything you can to just eliminate risk. And locally, there are some resources in Las Vegas for free or little to no cost mammograms. Um, they have at the breast. Uh, Breast Care at Centennial Hills Hospital. Um, that's one resource to look into. Breast Care Services at Southern Hills Hospital. Also, the Breast Center at Sunrise. Um, the Mountain View Lung Cancer Program 
has um, some great uh, breast cancer mammogram services. And then West Valley Imaging also has free or little to no cost mammograms. And there are programs out there like Red Rose. Um, that's a, a program I've participated in uh, through the St. Rose Hospitals. And um, they also offer various uh, screening and services, um, follow-up care, support, and many of those services are at little to no cost and um, can be adjusted based on income and resources. There are also um, different charity events you can get involved in to just bring awareness to breast cancer, um, wearing your pink, doing the race for the cure, um, just getting involved in your community. During October there's typically various events advertised um, across the country to get involved in and even just by wearing the, the pink ribbon um, and showing your support and hope to those that are in a battle with breast cancer or have a loved one that is as well just to continue to increase awareness and funding um, the importance of those screenings and preventative care and just being aware of the signs of abnormal breast health that need a doctor's attention like I had discussed earlier so um, I'm going to put a link in the chat the feedback link and we really value your feedback um, And those that uh, residents that complete this form and submit it um, will be in a drawing. They're doing drawings for uh, gift a gift card right now. Um, it's an incentive to give us a little feedback. That is a gift to get some feedback from our residents on on the enrichment programs that you're enjoying so i hope you have a great weekend um it's been nice visiting with you all this morning from the enclave in las vegas and i will see you next time bye